Hello everyone, and welcome back to DMG. We all know what a hard drive looks like, right? One of these boys? When I say small hard drive, you probably think of something about this size that would be found in a laptop. But there is something even smaller. A lot smaller. Meet the micro drive. It is very true to its name, it is a drive, and it is quite micro. These were common and popular in the early 2000s and late 90s, when flash storage was still extremely expensive. These are relatively small capacity by today's standards, but back then, having this size in a camera or MP3 player was absolutely insane. Now, the variant that I'm going to be disassembling today is, uh, it has this proprietary connector. It's double-sided 22 pin, probably was for a camera or MP3 player used internally. But there were also variants that went in uh, compact flash card slots. Now, this is a one gigabyte and um, it's a CF card. This is a slightly earlier model. This is from the early 2000s. This is from like super early 2000s and late 90s. These were pretty expensive, like a couple hundred dollars, but offered way more storage capacity than the, you know, 128 megabytes that you'd get from, from the largest compact flash solid state card you could buy at the time. However, they're kind of useless today, especially these with proprietary connectors, because, um, I mean, good luck finding something that that will actually go in. So, I thought I would disassemble it. And, you know, just the scale of this is absolutely tiny. I want to make it clear again that this is a physical spinning hard drive. There is a very tiny platter inside one of these. Alright, I have zoomed in a bit. I think we're gonna start with the screw on the corner here. It's not a triangular head, but it has like three things on it, you know? They definitely don't want you getting inside one of these. I think I'm going to peel back the label next because there are likely a bunch of screws hiding under here. Now, let me reflect it off the light really quickly. Right here, this circle you're seeing, that's where the platter is, and the rest of it is the head assembly. These are extremely fragile, and they're super low RPM. I believe uh, like 1900 RPM was a pretty common speed for these. There we go, there's our little, uh, that's likely the motor piece that we're seeing right now, but that is where the platter is in the drive. And yeah, it looks like there was a good amount of screws under there. This is going to be uh, absolutely adorable once we get it all taken apart. <laughs> it bit me. Feels like this metal shielding is wanting to come off. There's another small screw at the bottom there. But can I just pop this off yet? I can. Oh, here's our little board. Okay, so I will need to undo that screw, but under there we're seeing the absolutely minuscule circuit board. Yep, there we go, there's our control board. And then there are two more screws holding the board itself down.
So if that much of it was just shielding and the control board, the actual drive mechanism must be insanely thin. That's gotta be way thinner than I thought. Which, the fact that they managed to do this at all, let alone 20 years ago. So here's your uh, tiny controller here. That's where it connects to the drive circuitry. That's probably something with the power delivery. And then these chips, they have stuff over them so you can't actually see what they are. But that's quite interesting. And like, just for finger comparison, that's... It's really, really small. So this is just your normal like stuff to keep the metal drive from shorting out on the... Oh! So is this like, is there a way to get inside? I don't know if there's actually a way to get inside of it. It's very well sealed, which is not good for us. I'm gonna peel that away. Do I just need to, I think I may just be able to peel up this silver stuff and that is the drive underneath. Yeah, I think that's our drive mechanism under there. Looks like there's an additional layer. Oh, but we're starting to see the tiny components. This is amazing. So that's your platter. There's the magnet, my screwdriver sticking to it. And then here's your head assembly. I wonder what the head assembly is going to look like. Again, I just find it so incredible that um, that we can make something this small and precise. With how advanced hard drive technology has gotten today, I wouldn't be surprised if we could, you know, pack a terabyte onto one of these. Of course it would be incredibly unnecessary as you can buy one terabyte micro SD cards, which still blows my mind how they can fit that much data in that small of a space. Now, I will say the screws that are coming out of this part are uh, the full length of the uh, micro drive. So they go all the way through. All right, boys, here we go. Here it comes. It's so freaking cute. It's so freaking cute. Oh, it's tiny little head. <laughs> it's built just like a regular hard drive, but just on a way smaller scale. Here's your little ribbon cable between the controller and the head. There's, there's me. Your parking mechanism, I think... That does not seem like it's supposed to happen. And it looks like our head is a bit screwed up as well. I don't think that was something I did. And there's space for another head, which means that there were two platter variants of these. And I'm just gonna try and spin it with my screwdriver. Does it not want to? No, it doesn't. So it locks the platter in place. Okay, I'm just gonna take this out because, one second.
Oh yeah, our head is broken. That is really sad. I was hoping it would be in good condition. But I mean, it's it's so small that I can't fix it. But with the park mechanism, uh, the broken park mechanism removed, and if I squish that part of the head down, okay, I think I might try and remove it. I'm just going to remove this little board on the head. There we go. Okay, so I took off that little piece of the head. And now with the tweezers, I can move it on and off the platter. <laughs> no way. This is amazing. And of course it is a bit bent, so it is not going as smoothly as it should, but... I mean, it's just so cool. Just for contrast again, I'm going to pull out another Seagate drive. Because this, in fact, is made by Seagate, which is uh, probably why that park mechanism was broken. <laughs> this, uh, I believe that's called the spindle clamp, if I recall correctly. The spindle clamp on a normal sized Barracuda drive is larger than the whole platter on this one. No way. Okay, that's, that is incredible. And if we just take a look at our tiny controller board versus, you know, what you're getting on here. So that's your cache that holds files that are being moved to the drive. This is your main controller and that's, I don't know what that is. Um, probably motor control or something. So just looking at the chips on here, this is an Atmel, so that is probably your uh, main controller. Then one of these would be your cache, and then the other would be whatever this chip does. Again, that is just... And here is your little, uh, like, vibration dampening and, uh, like, protective ring. This whole thing is just so cool. Um, but that's it for this video. Thank you everyone for watching and see you next time.